This morning we're taking a look at one of the biggest farmers markets in the valley. Of course, we've been giving you a tour all week long. Time for the Capital City Public Market to get to show an array of some of their items. And this morning we've got Lisa Duplessis, who's the executive director of the market with us. Also joined by um, Amy Maskell, who's from the Silver Fox Farm. You're a vendor there. We thank you both for coming in so early this morning. Yeah. First off, we wanted to talk about uh, times and, and places and everything, Lisa, so that people know where to, you, you can't miss it if you're in downtown Boise it, on a Saturday, it's right? It's true, <laughs> it's true. We just opened our 20th season a couple Congratulations. weeks ago. Yeah, uh, every Saturday, 9.30 to 1.30, hard at downtown Boise. Um, so it's, we've got a whole array of things for you to get there. And uh, you were just telling me about some of these yeah. things. Um, we're going to get to some of the stuff from Amy's farm here in just a little bit, but some of the other things you also collect, rounded up from some of the other vendors. Yeah. A living wreath you were yep. telling me about here. Yeah, this year. you can put it on your table, hang it on your door, uh, water it every few days, and it's great to have. So, so just take it off and pop it in the water, and then yeah. you don't have to worry about yeah. you know getting the fake look that gathers dust and, right. and all that kind of stuff. Also, uh, looks like uh, some artwork yep, here in as well. Of, lots of art, lots of food, produce. Um, you know, we need it to warm up a little bit, but produce is going to start coming in. Um, all kinds of things for you to get down at the market. And one thing I've noticed every time I go there is those produce vendors are always very generous with those samples. And I don't say that just because I'm a pig and I like to eat, <laughs> but you you really get a taste of how you good do. that local stuff is so those apples and peaches you name it yeah and they got those they might slice off a chunk for you right there exactly. so Amy let's talk about your booth because you're one of the ones I think is easiest to find you just have to follow your nose <laughs> as we were saying <laughs> yes. during the commercial break <laughs> you've got a lavender farm so you can really smell it it kind of filled up our whole studio with the aroma <laughs> it does that when the Sun hits it you can find us at the market from pretty much any direction you're coming we're right at the corner at there at 8th and Idaho and our scent usually follows us from any any place in the market. <laughs> People know how to find it. So tell mm -hmm. us then, what are the advantages of having a lavender farm? What, what's it used for? Lavender has so many uses, I could go on all day. We can, um, it's a relaxant, and that is one of its biggest things. We distill our own oil, and it is a soothing thing. You can put it just about anywhere. It's good for migraines. It's a great decoration. It's a plant that you can use in your garden, cut into a hedge. Wow. Pretty much anything that you can think of, we've tried to create with lavender, and it it is um, a, a holistic herb you can use in so many fashions. And you're selling it in all these fashions, it looks mm -hmm. like, too, with some of these products, like you said, mm -hmm. the oils, those types of things, and even just the lavender plant itself, I'm assuming, right? We have right? the plants, we have real plants, we have dried plants, we have linen spray that you can spray on your sheets, it helps you sleep at night. We distill our own oil, which we use in all the products. Um, it's 96% pure, so it's, it's used in many things. Wow, so yeah, lots of options there with the lavender just one example and then you of course brought in several other ones Lisa yeah. and we've got more examples coming as well from the Capital City Public Market. Uh, a, an interesting combination of some things that you don't normally associate with barbecue necessarily but we're gonna get that up here as well. Thank you ladies for coming in bringing this beautiful display. More from the uh, Capital City Market coming up. Oh. Welcome back, everybody. You can hear the sizzling going on. This is from the Capital City Public Market. You saw some of our friends earlier, and now just another variety of the things you can go on. You can see this whole setup. And I might add, this is the first time when I wish that I had one of our special little boxes. I'm not usually yeah. dwarfed by a guest coming into the studio, but we're talking with Scott Tharp, who is with MFT Sauces. Correct. My family tradition, right? Nice to meet you. what that stands for. Kanoa Lopez also makes homemade root beer. Buck Snort Root Beer is the name of uh, his company. And we've had you on the show before, actually. I remember right. this quite distinctly because it was amazing. So let's get started <coughs> a little bit. Talk about your root beer process because it really is neat, especially with some of the things that you brought in here this morning. That's right. Thank you. So, uh, so basically, we make old-fashioned draft-style sodas. Our flagship product is root beer. Uh, we make it the old-fashioned way by um, brewing up uh, real herbs and spices. We take sassafras root, licorice root, and wintergreen. Uh, we add molasses and vanilla to, uh, to our product to finish it off, and we sweeten it with an evaporated cane juice. Um, so we don't add any artificial colors or flavors. There's no high fructose corn syrup in any of our, any of our sodas. And, and a uh, lot of people who shop at farmer's markets, that's important to them. That, that you that's have right. all those natural ingredients and everything. That's correct, yeah. It's, uh, it's a wonderful way to make uh, the, the soda the way it was made 100 years and, ago. And show people this, uh, this draft as well. I, I, you yeah. have some of the regular in here, I understand. That's right. So the regular root beers on this side here. This is so cool. This you created as well, right? With I the do. antlers and everything. That's <laughs> right. Yeah, I did. I did. It was actually a friend of mine's son who... Uh, who harvested this deer and we used the antlers to, <laughs> to, to add to the tap handles. It's an awesome setup and look how delicious that looks while you're getting a sense of that frothy root beer. The interesting reason though that we have you in here as well, Scott, is because you guys kind of came up with a brainchild together with your barbecue sauces, right? Well, we collaborated because we make an all natural product as well and he's brewing a homemade root beer and as I was telling you earlier, it's not too uncommon to find a lot of sodas 
in brines used for barbecue. So why not have that soda be root beer, right? Correct. And so you, you have a bunch of different flavors you brought in. Tell us what you were cooking up. Well, I do a run of mild, medium, hot, chocolate raspberry, and I do an extra hot. Chocolate raspberry. And you said that's your most popular, right? Yeah, chocolate raspberry is really taken off. People now are looking for something unique and different in their kitchen, and that's why the market's such an important part of Boise. Awesome. Because you get that difference down there. Yeah, and it really it's not stuff that you find in the grocery store. Not, it's not from home, and it's not the original flavors. Like, it's so, so many yeah, different you, combos. Yeah, you it's bring cool back stuff. the old school. That's the whole point of it. And you were sizzling up some meatballs with this. Is this the uh, chocolate raspberry here? I've got some homemade meatballs I make, and then we've got the root beer sauce. The root beer sauce, of course, since we do have root beer. And I know that our production staff is going to be, you know, swarming this table here yes. in just a couple <laughs> minutes. So, of course, we can, you can check out Buck Snort and MFT Sauces both at the Capital City Public Market. You yes. mind if I give this a taste? We've got to, we've got to do this this morning, of course, with the meatballs. You got to give it a run. And it's you, you it's added a very unique flavor, but it works extremely well. Well, yeah, I, and I love root beer and I love barbecue, so they've got to go well together, yeah. right? They sure do. Let's see. They definitely do. Yeah, <laughs> Delicious fun. meatballs. What you can find from MFT. And do you are you cooking up samples there? People want to give a, a, a try of your sauce oh, there. Oh yeah, at all? we're gonna give it a run. There you go. Yep. And so you'd give one taste of those you know you're probably going to want to walk out with a bottle as well. So make sure you check out that. Downtown Boise, hard to miss the Capital City Public Market, 9.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. They're going through December, folks, so every Saturday get out there. I need something to wash it down with. Can there you, you go, buddy. Oh, thank you so much, Kano. Of course. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> it's glorious. Fits the perfect flavor. It's delicious, by the way, both of you. Thank, thank you so much yes, for coming thanks in. thanks for having me.